we know that the church, the church of Jesus Christ, was born on Pentecost, but it had been prepared during Jesus' life on earth, when he was preparing his disciples, teaching them, and before he left, he told them that they should go to the world and preach the gospel, tell the good news. That's what it means. And ever since, we particularly, uh, the section of the church that is baptized as Protestants, uh, we have a tendency to focus on the Easter day, the resurrection, and the Pentecost, which is right and good. But we should not forget that Jesus had to die before he got risen. Before he rose, he died. And he just didn't die of heart attack or, you know, a small thing. He was crucified. And I want to invite you to rethink your reading of the Gospels. Because I know that most of us forget, sometimes intentionally, that Jesus had to die for us. We say Jesus saves. Jesus took our infirmities and sin on the cross. But we have to realize what it was because we don't know, really. And I remember, I just want to give you an example of my experience, my personal experience of it. When I was little, my grandma used to take me to church. And in church, there was what we called the Stations of the Cross. It was like little paintings of the various moments of Jesus going towards his torment and death on the cross from the time he was judged and condemned to the time he died and was laid to rest in a tomb. And uh, there were uh, chairs in the church and those chairs had a double seat. There was the normal seat, they were uh, old chairs, they had a, a seat at the normal height to sit, but that one was movable, you could fold it and below there was another one that was lower and uh, these chairs meant were meant to be able to help people to kneel down instead of kneeling on the ground so you could kneel on the chair and when we were remembering the stations of the cross we used to move our chairs gradually from one angle to the other focusing on each stop like bus stops on the way to the cross and each time you know, people were reading the Bible, the portion of the, the gospel that was de describing the moment that was uh, painted and then reflecting on it and on its lessons for us. And it really had a big and lasting impact on me. Then when I was in secondary school, on my way to school, I was walking and uh, we were living outside town and uh, there was a pedestrian way that was leading to town and that town was like Jerusalem. It was, uh, it had several hills and the people, the church in town had uh, rebuilt the stations of the cross across towns. And on my way to school, I was meeting them one by one because they were on that pedestrian way. So actually I was following that way backwards. To, to school and then when I was coming back from school I was going forward uh, along the stations of the cross that were sculptures uh, in a wall and I used to look at them stop here and there pick flowers in the grass and put them there pray on my own and continue I was doing that like from that years 13 to 17 when I was in that school 
And I want to invite you to rethink, not to abolish the, the, the suffering of the cross from your life. It's good to take the Gospels and read and read and read again. In 1991, the Catholic Church changed the order of the Stations of the Cross that were in their churches. And before, there were some that were just traditions that were not in the Gospel, and it was changed uh, in 1991. And for us, we have no uh, Stations of the Cross in our churches, but it doesn't mean that we are going to forget that Jesus died. Jesus gone, went to Gethsemane and he prayed and prayed his father because he knew he was feeling already in his body the suffering that he was going to endure. And he, his sweat was sweat of blood. Then he was arrested. Judas came with a, a band of uh, people in arms to arrest him. Then he went to, to the Sanhedrin. Then he was re rejected by Peter. Peter denied him. Then he was judged by Pilate. Then he was crowned with a, a crown of thorns in mockery by the soldiers. Then he was given his cross to carry. That was the tradition in those days. And then he met, he, he met Simon somebody from Cyrenia that was uh, coming because Jesus was already too weak. So he couldn't carry the cross. So they had to ask that man to help him. Then he met women on the way that were yelling and crying for him. And he talked briefly with them and he's recorded in the gospel again. Then he was nailed on the cross. Then he had a conversation with one of the uh, people that was on the cross by his side and promised him uh, to take him to paradise. And then he looked at his mother that was watching and asked John to take care of her. And then he died and then he was laid down to rest in a tomb. All these moments, they are good for us to remember from time to time. Because if we don't realize what he suffered for us, we're going to take the whole of his life for granted. And we shall never understand fully what it meant. Without the cross, there was no resurrection. There would have been no resurrection. And for us, like people say, no pain, no gain. Without suffering, there is no joy. We know that. Is the experience, like Jesus said, about the woman that is giving birth. Women are privileged to learn through that experience what it is. Before you give birth, you have to endure the pangs of birth. And some find it harder than others, but it's not easy anyway. And it can last for hours in some cases. Men have their own experience, especially in Europe where people climb mountains and the climbing is hard, is perilous. But when people get to the top, they have a joy that is meant, that is exceeding what they knew because they think of all the efforts they have put and now they have a rest and a beautiful view. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you went to the cross for us. People, remember and thank him every day.